There we go. We bet. There we go. So this, what I'm about to do, I, th I think this is helpful. This is not something that you have to memorize how to do. Um, it, what I'm, I'm going to be really explaining where these formulas that you're using will come from. I don't often like to, like to use formulas. Sometimes I'll just think through what's going on and I don't need those formulas. And you could probably do the same thing. But eventually, you're going, to, you're going to get these formulas. And they'll be provided on a test. But I just don't feel like a good teacher if I just throw those at you and say, plug the numbers in, and it'll just work. Trust me. Um, I want to show you that there, there's no magic there. You could, you could do without those formulas and just think through the, what's going on here and come up with them yourself without, without doing the plug and chug thing. So, so first, I want you to believe that there's nothing magical about these. And second, I think going through the process will just help you understand acceleration and velocity and some of these things better. So that's why we're doing this. But you don't have to really memorize everything I'm saying. Just follow along. I'll ask you questions. Um, give me answers back. Now, this first scenario, we have a, a car. And it's at a starting line. It's just sitting there. And suddenly, somebody starts to accelerate, and the car gets faster and faster and faster and faster and it doesn't stop at the finish line, it keeps going. So it's accelerating the whole time. And this is constant acceleration. Somebody's got the accelerator down the same amount. They're not just speeding up at, a, at weird jerky rates. We're gonna, th the goal of this is to eventually get down to the bottom of the page and be able to use the acceleration formula. The acceleration formula is change in velocity over change in time. We want to figure out this car's acceleration. We want to know how many, how many meters per second is it adding every second. What's the change in velocity over the time? So to do that, I'm going to read something to you, and um, hopefully somebody will blurt out the wrong answer. And if you don't, I'll, I'll encourage you to. Because somebody did that the first class last, yesterday, and it was really helpful. So this car travels from the starting line to the finish line in eight seconds. And the distance that it travels from the starting line to the finish line is 32 meters. So the acceleration, that's what we're looking for. Anybody want to blurt out the wrong answer? Guess what somebody blurted out yesterday? What's that? Four. They said four is the acceleration. And four is not the acceleration. Four is something. Four is the average speed, yeah. But that doesn't tell us the acceleration. Um, I'm going to jump ahead, though. I've, got, I've organized this to just lead us through things. The average velocity is distance over time, which is, um, in this case, 32 meters divided by 8 seconds, and that gives us 4 meters per second. So that's, that's a good jumping off place. We, we know that, but that's not really where we're going. It will help us get there, though. Now I'm going to start filling stuff in. There's some of this is just really obvious and easy to do. What's the distance that's traveled when it's right here? Zero. zero. And the time is zero seconds. And the velocity at the beginning? Zero. Zero. So we can do all that. That's no problem. At the end, the distance is 32 meters. The time is eight seconds. The velocity there, we don't know. But we do know that. We do know the, the average velocity. So usually at this point, some kind of precocious thinker can say, ah, I, I can see what's going on. I know what, the, I know what the maximum velocity is. So I'll just go over the scenario. The car starts here, zero meters per second. It begins to accelerate. It accelerates, 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 gets faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And finally, when it passes there, it's going the fastest it ever went. Um, all we know is what we've got here, and we know that the average velocity, we don't know the slowest speed or the fastest speed, but we know on average it was going four meters per second. So what's the top speed? Four. Four? Four is the average speed. Now would the top speed be, if it's going slow in the beginning and fast at the end, would the, would the top speed be the same as the average speed, slower than that, or faster? 
faster, right? So where do you think in all this, it, it's, it's going slow there, medium there, fastest there, where do you think it actually has that average speed? Where do you think it passes four meters per second? About the halfway point. That's, Wait, that's why I put this here. What so, if it accelerated faster at the end than it did at the beginning? Then it wouldn't be constant acceleration. Got, oh, so it's constant. So, uh, yeah, you, this, you can't figure this, this out unless based on the fact that we have we're assuming it's constant acceleration. For all these problems, we're going to assume mm -hmm. constant acceleration. If we don't, then you can't do anything. And in the real world, it might not be constant, but for physics problems for now, we're going to just have constant acceleration. So, if, um, if, it, if the average velocity is how fast it's going about right here, so about halfway through, it's going four meters per second. In the beginning, it's going from zero meters per second, accelerating up to four. So in the second half, it's going to go from four up to eight. eight. So constant acceleration means it's gaining the same amount for equal amounts of time. For the first four seconds, it gains four. For the last four seconds, it gains four. Um, the, and this is always true. If you have constant acceleration, then your maximum is going to be twice your average. So I'm going to put the average velocity here, and I'm going to write average, and write four meters per second. And then the maximum velocity is going to be eight meters per second. And just to spell everything out, initial velocity is zero meters per second. Average velocity is four meters per second. Final velocity is two times the average, which equals two. To, and you don't have to write everything I'm writing. When, when I solve problems on my own, I don't write everything out like that. But I'm just doing that to be a good teacher, I'm trying to. So four meters per second equals eight meters per second. That's the final velocity. So what this is saying, it's, there's a time of eight seconds, and it's going zero, now it's at four, now it's at eight, constant acceleration. Next part. What we want to get to is the acceleration formula that has change in velocity and change in time. This is so easy, it looks ridiculous, but I'm going to do it anyway. The, first, I'm going to get the change in velocity. You could just tell me what it is, but I'm going to subtract the final velocity minus the starting velocity. 8 meters per second minus 0 meters per second equals 8 meters per second. It's a, so it's a positive 8 meter per second change. And now I'm going to do the change in time. The time ends at 8 seconds and it started at 0, so it gained 8, but I'm going to write it out. 8 seconds minus 0 seconds equals 8 seconds. And now I can plug both of those in. If before I plug them into the formula, just think about it. This is how much velocity is being added on. This is how long it takes. It happened over a time of 8 seconds, but at that rate, how much, how much velocity is it gaining each second? One meter per second. So if it's gaining 8 in 8 seconds, it's gaining 1 for every second. This formula is just going to get us right to that. If these were more complicated numbers, you might not be able to just do that in your head. So acceleration equals change in velocity or change in time. In this case, it's a really easy number. Eight meters per second divided by eight seconds, and you end up getting one meter per second per second. I'm going to write one meter per second squared just to be different from what I've been doing. So that, there's really nothing mysterious there. The only thing is it's kind of a leap to real, make this realization that the final velocity is twice the average velocity, but hopefully that makes sense to you. As velocity goes up, it's real slow in the beginning, it's at its average speed halfway through, and by the end it's double that average speed. Now, I'm about to, to do this again. You don't have this paper, I'm just taking another sheet, and I'm doing the same thing, except I want to show you where this, this formula comes from. This one right here. So just sit there now, unless you really, really like to write stuff while I talk, and I guess I can't stop you. So what I'm going to do is just solve this algebraically, just to show you that you can. I'm going to do this really fast. The distance of the car is zero meters. The time is zero seconds. The velocity is zero meters per second. Now, if, if you weren't given the distance, eight, 
uh, 32 meters and you weren't given the time of 8 seconds, all you'd be able to do is write the distance of D and the time of T. So, but I could still solve this problem and come up with the acceleration. So the initial velocity in this case is 0 meters per second. What's the average velocity? D over T. It's distant, whatever the distance is divided by the time. So that's the average velocity. And that's the velocity at about the halfway point. So what's the final velocity? What's that? 2D over, it's 2 times this. And I can write it different ways first. I'm just going to write 2 times D over T. When I write it down here, I'll multiply that out. So the final velocity is 2D over T. Um, because it's double the average velocity. Now the change in velocity, I'm not going to go through the little steps I did earlier. Velocity goes from zero to that, so that is the change in velocity. It's 2d over t. And the change in time, zero to t, the change in time is just the time. So the acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time, 2d over t divided by t. And when you do this, that's like multiplying 2d over t by 1 over t, which gives you 2d over t squared. So that's the acceleration of the car. That is where this formula on the back of the, you flip over to the back now, that's, that's where that formula comes from. So there, there's really nothing mysterious about that at all. It looks, whoa, that's, that's complicated looking. It's got a square in there. But it's the same stuff we did on the front. I'm not going to make you derive that formula. This is going to be given to you on the test, but I just wanted you to see where it comes from and that it, that it makes sense. Now this and this, these are all just different versions of that. Um, you can, using algebra, instead of solving this equation for A, you can isolate D in there. So if you, if you isolate D out by itself, D equals one half AT squared. You can also take the same thing and you can isolate t. So if a equals 2d over t squared, then t is the square root of 2d over a. And these formulas will be given. You can use them um, however you need to. You don't have to memorize them. OK, halfway there. This is the, this is the other scenario I want to go over. This is, this is important to think about. Um, the diagram is a little screwy. This is a ball that's been thrown directly upward and that came directly down. The way I've got it drawn here, it's an arc. So it's going over like this. So it's not, that's not really showing what I, what I wanted to show. What I wanted to show is the ball goes straight up and then goes straight down again. So if that's what I want, why did I draw it like that? Because your bottom thing is time, so. No, something simpler, it's a simple answer. What would it look like if I tried to draw this drawing and so it could be It would be, this would be on top of this, and what, what's happening on the way up would be running into what's happening on the way down, and it would just be a mess. So the only reason I'm showing it like this is because I want to talk about what's going on when it's going up, and I want to talk about what's happening when it's coming down, and if they were on top of one another, it, it would be just a big mess. So that's why. It's unfortunate. Um, so the scenario here is suppose that somebody threw a ball up and it stays in the air for six seconds. So you, you do this. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. What that six Mississippi. And the, so the, the two questions that you can answer from that are that with really with, without a lot of um, math are how high did it go, and how fast was it going when it left your hand? The, the velocity one, that's, that's a little bit easier. And how high it went, that's not hard now that we just did the car thing, because can, we can use one of those formulas for that. So I'm going to start filling stuff in, and the first thing I want to fill in is this. When the, when the ball leaves your hand and starts to go up and up and up and up and up and down and down and down, as soon as it leaves your hand, it starts to accelerate. And the way I've said that is tricky, but I did that on purpose. As soon as it leaves your hand, what's its acceleration? It's, it's in free, 
free flight at that point. Okay, let me say it another way. As soon as it leaves your hand, what force is acting on it? Gravity. gravity. And what's the acceleration of gravity? You could do it in feet per second, or let's, let's just call it 10 meters per second squared. That's the, the acceleration. Now, if up is positive and down is negative, is gravity a positive acceleration or a negative acceleration? Negative. negative. So what this means is the second this ball leaves your hand, it's going to start to get faster or slower? Slower. Slower. It's going to get slower and slower and slower, and on the way down, it's going to get faster and faster and faster. Fastest you can ever throw something. No. The uh, you can throw it really, really fast, but as soon as it leaves you, it's just going to start slowing down. So you, just just hold on to that thought. I don't even want to. So somebody asked me one time, Mr. Stapleton, why can't you pick yourself up? And. I think it would have been better if I had just said, let me think about that and tell you next class, because I thought about it. It's such a weird question. I couldn't even wrap my mind around it. Why can't you pick your stats? We'll discuss that, that later. It's like the sound of one hand clapping or something. It's just some weird thing to meditate on. But back to this. Let's fill in, fill in the easy <laughs> stuff. In the very beginning, when the ball leaves your hand, how high is it? Zero, Zero meters. And the time is zero seconds. That's easy. Um, at the very end, when the ball comes back down to the ground, the height is zero meters. And the time? Six. Six seconds. That's, um, that's the easiest stuff. Now we can fill in something else. What's the next easiest thing to fill in on this? Time at the top. Time at the top. What's the time at the top? Three seconds, exactly. And I'm going to write something down now that... I think is really important. You can choose to write it or not, but remember it. Um, the up and let me turn this so you can look at that straight. The up and down, up, down trips are identical but opposite. And that's a really handy thing because if sometimes it's easier to figure out what's going on when the ball's coming down. And if you can figure that out, then you can say the upward trip is just the same but opposite. So if you get the velocity over here, you've got the velocity over there. The velocity when it leaves your hand is the same velocity it's going to have when it comes back. Now that's not true in reality because if you throw a wiffle ball up at you know, 60 miles per hour, it's not going to land at 60 miles per hour. Air screws things up. If you threw a cannonball up at 60 miles per hour, it would come down at about 60 miles per hour because it's not affected by air as much. But for these problems, this velocity, sorry, this speed is the same as that speed. Why are the velocities different? Because they're going in different directions. Different directions. Okay. So we got that part. The next thing that, that's, ooh, there's another really easy one to, f to fill in. You have to think a little bit. You have to be kind of clever, but which one do we know for sure? Velocity. Velocity where? This velocity. We don't know that yet. The velocity there? Yeah. Zero. Zero meters per second. When it goes, it goes up and it comes back down. So if it's going up and then it's going back, in between there it had to stop. So at the very top it's going zero. Okay, those are the easy ones. Now for a harder one. And with, there's a formula for this you're going to be given, but I think you can probably figure this out just by thinking. So here's the time at the top. It's three seconds. That's what it says on the clock. Then the clock says six seconds when it gets to the ground. This is the acceleration of gravity. Ten meters per second. Oh, I screwed up. Ten meters per second squared downward. So who can tell me what the velocity is right there? Think about how long it's falling. Think about how fast gravity is accelerating it. 30 meters per second, except it's not 30, it's negative 30. Because at the end it's going down, and down's negative, up is positive. So there's a formula which is really, you. if you got that, you have the formula built into your head. 
velocity equals acceleration times time. You take whatever the acceleration is, which tells you how much velocity changes every second, and then you just multiply that by the number of seconds. So in this case, it's negative 10 meters per second squared times 3 seconds, not times 6. It's the, the time that's elapsed there, and you get negative 30 meters per second. So now that we've got that velocity, that makes one of these other things. We've got two blanks left. Which one do we know? Uh, doesn't give us the height yet. We've got to do some more to get the height. So it gives us that. What's that velocity? Positive 30. If it's coming down at negative 30 meters per second, it went up at 30 meters per second. So it's going 30 meters per second. After one second, it's going 20. After, after two seconds, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. After two seconds, it's going 10 meters per second. After three seconds, it stops. Then after, at four <laughs> seconds, another second, it's going negative 10. Another second, it's going negative 20. And finally, at six seconds, it's going negative 30. So the question was, is the height at the top 90 meters? And it would be, it would be if this was the velocity the whole time. If you're going 30 meters per second upward for three seconds, it'll go 90 meters. So without using any formulas, I bet you can figure this out. Um, so it's, it's not going 30 meters per second for the whole three seconds it's going up. What's its average velocity on the way up? I gotta think backward from earlier. This is how fast it starts, that's how fast it's going at the end. What's the average velocity for the upward trip? 15, it's gonna be right in between there. Just like with the car when it was speeding up, the average was four and the maximum was twice that. Here we've got the maximum, and then we've got the minimum. The average is going to be right in between. So if, on average, it's going 15 meters per second for three seconds, how high is it going to go? 45 meters. 45 meters. 45. 45. Very good. <laughs> so the now you don't have to think through that, but the fact that you kind of jumped into that, that's great. So that's what I'm saying. These formulas. You can, you can answer the problems without really using those formulas. What I'm going to do right now, though, is use the formula just so you can see how you can, you can figure out the height with one of these formulas. I'm going to put a note here. Use, or I'm going to use the word analyze. Analyze the downward trip. And really, honestly, these formulas will work if you do it on the upward trip, but it's just it's a little screwy. Um, the, the reason I want to use the downward trip is because when the ball is falling down, it's starting from zero and it's accelerating with constant acceleration. That's the situation where I came up with this. Remember with the car, it was starting from zero, speeding up, and this formula gives us the acceleration. This formula comes from a situation where you're starting from zero and speeding up, and it really only works then. It, kind of, it does kind of work in other cases, but um, I w so I want to just apply it to this. So this, this ball is starting at zero, and it's falling for three seconds, so I know the time, and I know the acceleration. I'm just going to write both of those down. What's the time this ball is falling? I'll call it fall time. Fall time is three seconds. What's the acceleration of this ball? Yeah, I'm going to put negative 10 meters per second squared. Um, sometimes we'll leave off that negative just because it, it, it's okay to, and I'll, I'll get to that. So I have these two things. I want to figure out the distance the ball falls. So looking at my three formulas at the top, which one do I use, the left one, middle one, or right one? The distance one, the middle one. So one half at squared. I'm gonna draw an arrow down to here. Distance equals one half at squared, and I'll plug in my acceleration, negative 10 meters per second squared. Plug in my time of three seconds. Make sure you square the whole three seconds. Don't just say it's three seconds squared. 
And working on this, I'll multiply these out first. So I get negative 5 meters per second squared. 3 squared is 9 seconds squared. 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. The second squareds will cancel out and you get negative 45 meters. So why is it negative 45 meters? What's that? Yeah, on the downward trip, the ball is falling down 45 meters. So that's how far it went. So if, if we want to know what the height is, it's just going to be 45 meters. But that's why we get the negative there. So on this trip, it goes positive or negative 45. On that one, it went positive 45. Why is it three seconds? Why is it three seconds? Squared. Uh, because that's what's in the formula. And why is that squared? It's because it comes from this. And why is that squared? It's because way back here when when we have um, velocity divided by time you end up getting second squared so you've got to have a t squared in there somewhere but you don't really have to know that I mean you can you can do these a lot of different ways that's one thing I like about physics there are a lot of ways to solve things but you can also just use those formulas so these these are all the formulas you're going to need on the first test, and unless I'm really being screwy and not thinking of something. And I, I want to point out that the basic ones. Are you giving this? us these two, or are we going to have to remember them? I'll give them to you. I don't know. I may give extra points on a test if you memorize them. I might have. Maybe I'll put these on a separate sheet of paper and give them to everybody. And if you don't want them, I might give you some points. I could do that. But but everybody will have them. You won't have any deduction for that. So. Well, this, that's the basic velocity formula. These are just geomet or, um, algebraic manipulations of it. So instead of solving for V, you can rearrange it and solve for D or solve for T. This is the basic acceleration formula. And these are just ways to rearrange the formula to solve for different things. This is the formula that I came up with with the cars. And these are different ways of saying it. So you'll just be using that. Now, I'm going to stop this. Maybe I shouldn't, but I will.